In the studio now is Professor Atli Damundani, chairperson of the Namibia National Cybersecurity Competition. Very good morning to you, Prof, and uh, thank you so much for joining me. It's a pleasure. Thank you so much. Yeah, cybersecurity, obviously, I, I read a bunch of words there that uh, I myself probably didn't also understand. But when we talk about cybersecurity, what exactly are we talking about? You know, when, what space are we securing and why is it so important? To make it simple uh, for the wider audience, I would just say you as an individual, you are identified with a name. That mm -hmm. name, we call it data. Okay. And every aspect that describes you, where you come from, what you do on a daily basis. And when it comes to cybersecurity, we are asking a very fundamental question. How do we make that data secure? Mm -hmm. So that one, it's not being used without your permission. Uh, it's not being used to, to perpetrate crimes elsewhere. Because when it comes to the threats, which where we now talking in terms of cybersecurity, where we are trying to secure that data, those threats are really trying to uh, distort that mm -hmm. data in a certain format. And in certain cases, there are losses that are even uh, practical. There's financial loss, there's reputational damage, there's a whole lot of other challenges that could really uh, be attributed to the attacks. So when it comes to cybersecurity, in simple terms, we are saying we are trying to protect the data the data which is actually something that describes or if able to identify who a person is or mm -hmm. even what an organization is. Yeah. Whatever, even if it's your car, you can also identify it with the data because now yeah. we talk of these emerging technologies and there's a lot that happens in that world as well. Yeah, we see that in more developed countries, uh, uh, pressure groups are standing up to big corporations who are mining what we hear about, main, mining data. And data is being dubbed as, as the new gold. Talk to us about you know, why it's so important for certain companies you know, to, to get this data. What, what happens to that data? What were they going to do with Jonas Mbambo's data? What are they going to do with your data at the end of the day? Why is it so important for certain companies to buy up this data? Um, there is a concept that is very much used uh, in the cyberspace, uh, which is uh, called the digital twins. And sometimes, we talk of you yourself being a replica of whatever is found on the internet, etc. So there is a lot that can happen in as far as uh, data is concerned. Mm -hmm. Because once I have a data point about Jonas here, I can connect it to which organizations Jonas uh, sometimes interact with. Where do you bank? Uh, where do your children go to school? Mm -hmm. uh, wh which is your village? Uh, wh what's your favorite sports? What websites I visit? What websites do you visit? As an organization, if I have access to that data, I can now do what is called targeted marketing, advertising, uh, which is why it's really it's so much a big industry uh, when it comes to some of uh, the giants, uh, without m mentioning names yeah. per se, <laughs> but uh, the data is really what informs some of the decision points in as far as uh, the digital era uh, business is concerned, because then you are able to formulate some trends Mm. You're able to do customized uh, kind of advertisements. You have seen uh, in developed countries, there are those billboards. The moment they uh, capture your face, they change the advert to just tailor make uh, whatever is going to interest you and that's going to force you sometimes to make a certain purchase. Yeah. It's just because of the data that they've just been uh, getting from all your behaviors on social media platforms, ETC. Hackers in the same fashion as well, they also use that information. If they want to attack an organization, it's a matter of just checking what are you posting on social media, yeah. what is your LinkedIn profile like, and when they create what we call uh, phishing emails, they just use that data to so they know who is your chief information officer, they know who is your finance director. If they send an email pretending to, to be your finance yeah. director, it's easier for you to believe because the email is in the fashion that you would expect and uh, they use the type of language your finance director would actually mm -hmm. use. And, so, all the, and all the yes. while this is done from somewhere remote. Yes. You've yes. never met this person physically. Certainly. <laughs> and that's very scary. Let's, let's jump into the Namibia National Cybersecurity Competition. Perhaps just give us some, some background, how this thing came about and why did you see the importance of initiating, uh, initiating uh, this type of competition? Thank you, Jonas. That's a very good uh, a question, really, just trying to ask us where are we coming from yeah. and what has really motivated us uh, for, for this initiative. So this has uh, been uh, a 10-year initiative, counting this uh, from now. 2015, uh, we're sitting uh, on a certain table 
uh, among us, uh, some of uh, the pioneers of uh, these initiatives at Namibia University of Science and Technology. Um, what really motivated us to really look at if we can have a platform mm. which provides uh, a simulated environment of what happens in uh, real uh, everyday operations in businesses, in organizations, where we take away some of the complexities in terms of maybe the boardroom protocols or the organizational uh, hierarchies in, in a sense. Just create a level platform where we bring in uh, seasoned industry experts, mm -hmm. our students who are, we are trying to groom for, for the industry uh, to be on the same platform, to be in the same room, yeah. and to be in a position to discuss some of the techniques and the tactics which can be used to really create uh, very sound cybersecurity uh, practices, uh, principles, and solve some of the uh, challenges that we keep actually facing in the cybersecurity uh, arena. Because it's a field that is really very much uh, facing a lot of challenges because of how the technology is evolving, how things are moving fast. Even mm. we talk of now all these uh, emerging technologies, like if you, in the space of AI, large language models, your chat GPTs, yes. everything that's coming uh, on our horizon. And all that, what it entails, we used to know when it's a phishing email, if it says uh, those errors and all that, yeah, we know it's maybe the Yahoo boys from Nigeria. Mm. But nowadays, with ChatGPT, you actually find a very nicely coined phishing email. Yeah. You're not able to pick <laughs> those errors like before. Yeah. So for that purpose, we have created the Namibia National Cybersecurity Competition to bring industry experts, to bring our students, to bring all even uh, individuals who just have a passion to say, I want to be part of this, uh, the, the responsibility to secure the information systems around me to, uh, to secure my own personal data even yeah. for a start. Mm. I think the cyberspace, um, I think it's safe to say that it's, it's like in many aspects of the world, it's, it's, it's a fight between good and evil. So you guys are supporting or rather encouraging what they call uh, ethic, ethical hacking, correct? Where you are hacking but for good, where you are countering the bad guys, uh, so mm. to say. Um, and talking about, uh, talking about ethics with the advent of, you know, chat GPT and, 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 and obviously the, the good things that it's bringing around, but it's also becoming a challenge. Mm -hmm. In the academic space, for example, you, we've, 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 we've heard of, of lecturers complaining that, ah, John has, your, your English all of, become, all of a sudden become like Shakespeare, but usually you wouldn't even be able to string a, a sentence together. Mm -hmm. How are we going to challenge that or, you know, because people are divided now. Chat GPT has, has, has brought about opportunities, but at the same time, challenges as well. Do we embrace it? Do we take some elements and do away with some others? Talk to us a bit about that. I think it's, uh, you, you can't really fight the inevitable uh, to say technology uh, is almost like uh, one of uh, the changes that we can't keep on like uh, hiding away from. Mm. Um, when something, has, uh, let's say, matured to a level where it's now need to be a mainstream uh, item for consumption in, in, in the space. Uh, let me just come in a more simplified approach. So we have to take it with both hands. It's almost like a double-edged sword. There's a good and a bad part of it. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we have to embrace it, yeah. but with, with caution. And I like the fact that you mentioned a very key aspect, ethics. And we have to do that in a responsible way yeah. uh, to know that to what extent are we using some of uh, these technologies in as much as they can help us to advance even in some of the developmental aspects that we need to be focusing on. Uh, just earlier on, you were talking of smart cities. Uh, so if you're looking at uh, some of those aspects where that technology can still uh, be very useful, we embrace that part. Then we also have a bit of a caution in terms of uh, where that can also be perpetrated to advance harmful effects. We have cyberbullying, uh, which is also being perpetrated as a result of some of these technologies. We now don't know whether we are talking to a human being in yeah. most scenarios because of some of these technologies. There's a lot of impersonation of uh, real uh, uh, figures of uh, influence, for example. If someone can just imitate uh, a certain minister having uh, issued out a statement about uh, maybe certain actions. Like uh, as in Namibia, we are going to be facing elections and we have to be careful around some of the deepfakes, yeah. uh, some of uh, the misinformation. 
And that can be very harmful if you look at that. So this is technology at, at use. So we have to look at all those aspects uh, in, in a more uh, kind of uh, responsible way, in a more, uh, more depth instead of just taking things at face value. Mm. Let's embrace the good and let's also have a bit of a caution in terms of what are some of uh, the detrimental effects in as far as uh, these uh, emerging technologies are concerned as well. Mm. Uh, 10 years into your journey, how would you say uh, you have grown in terms of uh, um, being recognized and the stakeholders that have come on board and uh, some of the perhaps success stories that have come out from, from this competition? Uh, what are the good things that have come out from it and perhaps also some of the challenges that you encountered in the beginning that, that you have now overcome with time? Uh, Thank you so much. Uh, the, a a 10-year period is a journey indeed. Uh, there's been a lot of uh, uh, growth, even in terms of the stakeholder engagements. What we have seen, we, when we started in 2015, mm -hmm. maybe we had uh, less than 10 stakeholders that were um, really supporting the initiatives. Now, uh, as you track uh, the whole growth up until now, uh, 10 years down the line, we are talking of more than 35 wow. uh, stakeholders that are on board. So we have seen companies coming in, sometimes even with long-term support in terms of sponsorship. The likes of MTC, they'll say, we have a five-year commitment. We are going to be supporting these initiatives for both the national initiatives, the regional initiatives, and international initiatives. Mm -hmm. We have seen companies that have also uh, bring in even, uh, we have the environment where we have the judges, like your, your NAMPO, uh, your Bank of Namibia, we have been having judges that have been seasoned throughout this competition, wow. ensuring that this is an, a platform uh, that is living to what uh, the expectations that maybe society is going to be having out of it. We have uh, seen uh, even sectors that are not really like IT directly related coming on board. Uh, you wouldn't uh, imagine, let's say, office economics coming and saying, no, we are supporting these initiatives. Yeah. They understand that when it comes to cybersecurity, it doesn't matter which field you are in, because if I get a, uh, attacked as a bank, it's going to have a ripple effect. It affects almost every other sector. When it comes to cybersecurity, we say it's a team effort. Yeah, yeah. Uh, wherever you are, this is where we put our sides, our differences. We actually can learn from each other. We put our resources together. And we have actually seen... Uh, most of the graduates that have come through this experience now holding some of the prominent positions wow. in our local industry. So uh, for organizations that didn't really have like prominent cybersecurity departments or positions, they are now opening up to create those. So that, that impact alone, we cannot put a price to it. So we have seen a lot of growth. Uh, challenges, of course, we have seen sometimes uh, we need more resources to grow to the demand yeah. Uh, that we are finding, really getting uh, especially uh, the response from industry to say we want A, B, C, D, which is what maybe we are looking at uh, uh, fast forward maybe another decade from now to say we are seeing more integration of industry initiatives in what we do and the way even we run the competitions, we have scenarios that come from industry. These are typical challenges they would have faced and they yeah. will simulate it in an environment where we just present to, to, to the uh, uh, students to work out while this, uh, the industry is playing uh, the bad guy role yeah. where they are attacking and <laughs> while is these guys are trying to protect their systems. It's really amazing what you see in that environment. And we actually seen with the growth, uh, the patron for this competition, the now uh, Honorable Minister of Minister of ICT, on, uh, Honorable Emma Theophilus. Yeah. So we have actually seen that growth in terms of support mm. from relevant uh, line ministries, from the organizations that have come aboard and say, we want to provide the infrastructure. So the essentials have come and say, you guys, you don't have the capacity for infrastructure. We are coming on board. We are going to provide the, the environment where the students are going to be competing on. So there is a lot. I wish we could have the whole day just to just go uh, through this. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I actually like the fact that you know this initiative addresses an issue that has been ongoing for quite some time, that, that link or oh, that break up in the link between what's being taught in the classroom and what's, being, what's happening in real life. And I think when it comes to cybersecurity, you, you can't separate the two. You have to address the fact that, look, what's happening now, what's mm. being taught in the classroom is what's 
actually happening outside uh, the classroom. And, and I think that is really a, an issue that has been, been addressed. Uh, moving on to uh, when the, 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 the competition will take place and maybe perhaps who, who, who is able uh, to participate in this, uh, in this competition. Right. Uh, the competition normally runs during the Cyber Security Month, which is October. Okay. And for this year's uh, competition, we are penciling the first weekend of uh, October. Uh, that is uh, the, uh, the 4th and uh, the 5th of uh, October. Uh, so it coinciding with our 10th anniversary, we are trying maybe to do things a little bit different. We are trying to bring back the alumni uh -huh. uh, to, to the competition arena. If they are listening and are going to really be saying we are, we are putting ourselves, we are raising our hands in, uh, out there, we are asking them to come back and say, come plow back to where you started. Uh, you can either even formulate a team that is going to compete with uh, those that are still in, in the trenches. Uh, learning the roots, uh, also trying to, to walk in your footsteps. And we are also saying, come, let's sit on the same table and brainstorm on how best we can just reflect on these 10 years. Mm. What has uh, really transpired? What can we improve going forward? Uh, but mostly we would want to celebrate uh, these milestones that we have achieved together. So in terms of uh, who can really participate, uh, this is open to... Either if you're a registered college student, uh, whether you have uh, high school, we have actually seen high schools coming to the competition and participating nice. in the likes of your DG, uh, DSHP. Uh, they, they've really been uh, surprising us, actually, because mm. they have certain skills that you wouldn't imagine. Mm. Uh, they compete even with uh, the college students. Wow. So we, we are liking that aspect because we can do uh, the catch them while they are young. Yeah. We are also uh, saying when, when it comes to this platform, it's open to, to every individual as well. As long as you're curious, come mm. in, there's a role to play. Because if I give you a scenario in terms of how the competition is set up, we normally just have an everyday setup. We can say this is NBC and this is their daily operations. We have customers, you have... Uh, uh, trips you do, ETC, all those operations, we simulate it in it. So you always would find a role to mm. play. So it's open to all individuals, uh, to all companies, uh, regardless of your sector, mm. whether you are technical or non-technical. Because what we are saying, we are cr uh, creating that platform for creating awareness. Yeah, yeah. So, I, yes. I think that's a question that I wanted to ask uh, last, and that is you know, for somebody watching this or somebody's an interest in cybersecurity, Usually when you talk about ID, they say you must be mathematically inclined. What are the prerequisites that one must have to be, uh, you know, to become a cybersecurity specialist? Is it, apart from, obvious, of course, being curious, what else are the prerequisites? I, I like the way you're asking that question. I can already tell I'm going to be having another candidate coming to my class. <laughs> 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 right. In, in, in terms of uh, uh, maybe the requirements, of course, we can't rule out maybe the requirement for a mathematics background, especially for those that are coming out of school. Mm -hmm. uh, but it might be a different story altogether. Maybe for somebody who has been in industry, it, whether we, we have seen even people coming from parallel markets, like someone from marketing, oh. finding themselves in, into cybersecurity. Uh, somebody from even finance finding themselves in, in that space. But so I would say. I wouldn't want really to box people and say you have to specifically have uh, these uh, qualifications for you to be in a position to say to play in the cyber space because there are so many roles that you would find yourself playing there because we talk of even social engineering so someone who from humanities yeah. could actually find it uh, they will find a best fit in terms of where they can actually find themselves in. Okay. I would say cyber security is everybody's responsibility. Mm. Because, because it's cross-cutting. It's cross-cutting. Yeah. Yeah. So I wouldn't want really to limit. But in, of course, in terms of our uh, degree setup qualifications, we do require mathematics as a requirement, especially for those that are coming from high school, because then you would need to have uh, the basics uh, of understanding. Because when you talk of some of uh, the concepts like how do you encrypt, which is uh, maybe uh, something that would also need some mathematical a background, yeah. you would need to, to have that. But there are various channels, obviously, depending on the level at which you would want to enter into the space. All right. Prof, thank you so much for your time. And I think, uh, including myself and our audience at home, uh, they've, they've learned a thing or two about cybersecurity. Thank you so much.
It's an honor. Thank all you right. so and much. And all the best for all, right. all the planning. Pleasure. All right.